acting titans Al Pacino and Robert De Niro finally face off in 1995's Heat. Is this the pairing that it's all cracked up to be? Stay with us to find out. Welcome, friends, to the 3324 Podcast. Thank you for joining us. As always, we start off humbly thanking you for listening. Because otherwise, it would just be the five of us that listen to this episode. So we, we, thank, <laughs> we thank listeners six and above for your, for your participation. It always means a lot. We don't know what number you are, but uh, we thank anybody above listener number six. We should appreciate we, this should show. We this show's numbers? for you. Do we, should we spread them out or what? Can we give the numbers Is that like a marathon or something or what? Yeah. What well, do we don't know. I, I, you know what? We'd have to have people go online and say, hey, I listened. And then we can assign a number and <laughs> Facebook, Twitter. It will be too much. So we're just going to thank everybody. No matter what number you are, your number yeah. is important. As and as always, always Eric, is, Eric is here as well. How are you doing? I'm good. Buddy. Yeah, I'm very good. Yourself, well? sir. I'm doing all right. All uh, all extremities are attached. Heart is beating. <laughs> so, you know, can't ask for much more than that at this point. So uh, we've got some guests here. This is, uh, again, the, the, the trio. The usual suspects. Yeah. yeah that's the perfect name. The hat, the hat trick of, like of guests that we have here. No. Uh, let's start off with uh, the best dressed one, Sean Grady. How are you, Sean? <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm doing well. <laughs> Happy to be here as always. Thank you very much, Sean. You you can follow him on Historical Drama on yeah, wow. Facebook and Instagram. Uh, great stuff that he does there. If you're into local history, especially in the New York, uh, Westchester, downstate area, check him out. A lot of fun. Thank you. Uh, next up on the acting palette, second be best dressed, Nick Leshy. Thank you. How are you, Nick? Doing great. Wore my best jacket today because yes. I know I'm. This is going to be a big debate. So he's, he's, dre <laughs> he's ready to go. He's dre <laughs> He's dressed for a debate club, or he's dressed as as Neil McCauley. Uh, Nick, you also have a show that you're just uh, in the middle of uh, right now as, as well, right? Yeah, it's at the Bartow Pell Mansion and Museum. Um, it's actually called Monster. It's the making of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. So it's a really great show. Immersive theater. We take the audience from room to room. Um, it's been really fun. This is our final weekend, but uh, you know, check it out when you go to the cool. website because they have other performances coming what's, up. For what's the shows. website? Uh, I will email that to you because I don't have it off the top of my head. But if you just look up Bart okay. Opel Mansion in the Bronx, you'll you'll find it. Got it. You know what we'll do is we'll put we'll put links in the show notes to historical drama on Facebook and also to the Bart Opel Mansion as well. So you can find us some great, fantastic local artistry uh, and entertainment. And and you know fall is upon us, and that's a really a great time to enjoy this kind of stuff as well. There's there's nothing like autumn uh, in the Northeast. Is that a fair assessment? Christy Cuomo, our third, our third guest. Is that fair? Fall in, in, in the Northeast? Nothing like it. Nothing like it. Cool. <laughs> that was so big, convincing. I'm, I'm not a big pumpkin spice person, so I'm not going to jump on that. It's just. All right. Give me done with we, were gonna do, we were going to do, we were going to do a top five pumpkin spice types of foods, but I guess you're not going to be involved in that one. No, there, I don't think there's anything any, anywhere more beautiful. Yes. Than fall in New York State, yes. hands down. Maybe Apple Maine. Picking. I don't know. I've never been to Maine, so I don't know. But the further the further north you drive, like Connecticut is very pretty. There's uh, this yeah. time of year the the foliage and uh, mm -hmm. the Northeast just in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful place to be. Beautiful. We've got three. We've got we got three beautiful people and two kind of oh, kind of sketchy people as well here. <laughs> oh, you, I'm you, speaking for Eric. Oh. You didn't. You didn't actually. Okay. You didn't actually introduce me, though. I did. I said Christy Cuomo. How are you? Did and he? I asked about fall. Welcome, yeah. Christy. Welcome. Did he introduce me? Yes. Welcome. He did. He did. Yes. He mentioned you. He mentioned me. All right. All right. Yes. Yeah. There was oh. there was about three there was about three feet of red well, carpet he asked left you to roll question. out for you, and we rolled it out. He asked you if yeah. the Northeast is the most beautiful, yeah, and okay. that's how and we you mentioned started. Me and then you name. responded, so that that infers that you <laughs> acknowledged that you were introduced. So that's how it works on podcasts. I introduce people, they say something witty banter, we toss it back and forth, and uh, we move on. And we mm -hmm. are moving on with this. Uh, let's see, we we have to lay a little thing out here. We've been trying to get this episode done for a while. We've been yeah. wanting to do heat, kind of putting it out there, and and I don't know if I. I don't know if I forgot about what responses I got. And then I, I kind of asked again and kind of, you know, kind of put it out there. I know I put it out there multiple times. And it's just one that we've been wanting to get to. Um, and there's like a list of people, you know, kind of send it out and people respond. And, and Nick was kind of like, yeah, you know, if 
I'll I'll do you know I'll be on the I'll I'll be on the episode if you want me to, um, <laughs> because I'm not really a big fan of it. And I was like, absolutely, like why like why not? You know, um, we all, there's always a sacrificial lamb that we need every so often to offer up to the podcast <laughs> gods. Okay, <laughs> that we can <laughs> no pressure, no pressure <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> no, so so Nick but is going to play Nick, <laughs> Nick, Nick is if we want to. If you want to put it in, in, in this this perspective, Nick is like Henry Fonda in 12 Angry Men, and I'm like Lee J. Cobb in 12 Angry Men. <laughs> Nick, Nick is going to try and sway That's the jury, and get back. each one over to yeah. him. See, and my, I, already have, I already have the jury. <laughs> my goal is not to sway. My goal is just to share the truth. And you all <laughs> accept, <laughs> whether you accept the truth or not, I don't know. No, but well, I know I'm, I'm in a minority for sure because like, I would say like, 95% of the people I know or that I bumped into and definitely all over the web, they think this movie's a classic. This is a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. I just think it's overrated. I wouldn't call it a bad movie for sure, but mm-hmm. um, that's just my opinion. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for being Thanks. on. Uh, we appreciate it. Well, you, said everything you, need, you said everything you needed Goodbye. to say. I think, you, I think you were quite succinct, so thanks a lot for stopping in. <laughs> and we're going to continue with the rest of the episode. <laughs> All right, let's let's oh, get cracking wow. on this. Let's let's open it up a little bit more. Uh, but that's that. You know what? I, and we appreciate that, though. Not every not everybody likes everything or feels the same way about stuff. And that doesn't mm-hmm. mean we can't still celebrate and have a, a a great discussion, which I'm looking forward to as well. That's what movies um, are all you know, about. No, right? Yeah, you know, and and that's the beauty. So let's let's get cracking on this. Why, why don't we say that? Uh, this was released in December of 1995, written and directed by Michael Mann, a 60 million dollar budget. Nice. Yeah. Big, big chunk of change, you know, because you got some high, we'll go into the cast, but geez, $187 million box office. So that's a really nice return on that. That's kind of, mm-hmm. you know, good, bad, or indifferent. The film, it made money. People definitely went out uh, to see this film as on an epic on an epic scale. Let's get into the cast a little bit and everybody can kind of throw in, uh, you know, some gro- moans and groans or hurrahs. <laughs> uh, of course, you got Al Pacino as Vincent Hanna, Robert De Niro, as Neil McCauley. Now, this is the pairing that everybody's been waiting for their whole lives. Yes, caveat. They were, they did, they were in the same film in Godfather 2, but they never shared any scenes because of time shifting and, and all that. Dean, so, how did yes, you know that? In, what's that? How do you, how do you know that? Because I read it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say I saw it, but I read it. Oh, that's um, right. You didn't see Godfather or Godfather too, did no, you? No, no, he didn't. Wow. Oh, he, he's outed. No. He's no. Wow. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Dean. We, we, thank you, Dean. Oh, we're gonna, man. Go now. We're going to watch it. <laughs> look, at, look at the look of disgust on Sean's face. Is that face. true? Is, is that for real? The, no, the it's, look, a, that's the a fact. The look of disgust yeah. on oh, Sean's man. face was palpable. Sean's going to leave them. as much a few months ago. Dean's going to be the only one left on the podcast after this one. <laughs> You're gonna I've never lose seen your them in their entirety. Yeah, I just actually That's... watched all three because after I watched the offer, yeah. I had to I had to rewatch everything. I saw Godfather four. Four? Is that the one Godfather where the Godfather four? four? Yeah, doesn't he <laughs> fight in space? Doesn't he fight like like Jason in space or something? Godfather. Oh, <laughs> right. You're you're in South. You're in South. No, I think that was called the Freshman, right? Wasn't that called the Freshman? Yeah, I saw the Freshman. Yeah, I right. see the Freshman. There you go. Which is a great film. That could have been Godfather. <laughs> four, sure. a spiritual yeah. sequel. Yeah, to that. he saw the Freshman, um, but not the Godfather. Not the Godfather. <laughs> uh, you got Val Kilmer as Christian Hurlis. We're not going to go through each character name. Uh, you got John Voight. Yeah. Uh, Tom Sizemore. Diane Venora, uh, the first of the leading ladies in this film. Amy Brenneman. Uh, you got Ashley Judd as well. Uh, Michael T. Williamson, a uh, great character actor. Wes Studi, who had just made an appearance in The Last of the Mohicans, which was mm. Michael Mann's previous. Oh, great film. Uh, Ted Levine. You'll recognize him. <laughs> uh, Dennis Haysbert. William Fickner, one of our favorite character actors as well. Natalie Portman in a, a younger uh, role before she would be Padme Amidala. Uh, the great Tom Noonan, who was also in uh, Manhunter, um, which was another Michael Mann film. Kevin Gage as Wangro, Hank Azaria, Danny Trejo, Henry Rollins, Tone Loke. Yeah. Jeremy Piven before he went to uh, <laughs> before he went to Entourage and got his hair done. And uh, Xander Berkeley. Now you know where the Rollins. budget went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it went to that's pay pretty people. much where the money went. Um, and <laughs> where it went cash. to also is location shooting because there was no sound stages used in the filming of this movie. Mm. Everything was filmed somewhere, which is really kind of, I think that's what gives the the film 
it's identity. Honestly, is mm-hmm. is that it's you feel LA, you know, in, in Neil McCauley's apartment overlooking LA and those night scenes and just the hustle and bustle of things, you, you know, LA is as much a character in this film. I think Sean, what do you, what do sure. you, th- you just watched this. Now you haven't seen this that much, right? You said you'd seen it maybe once or twice early on and then caught it again. Next I saw it once. Uh, I guess when it came out, I remember seeing it in the theater mm-hmm. and I will say this, I, I probably felt like there was a lot of hype. And when I revisited it, which was the first time the other night, I didn't remember a thing. Really? Nothing. Mm. I didn't. Wow. But I was engaged. I started That's this movie yeah. at midnight. Okay. <laughs> at midnight. Wow, oh, man. Wow. I feel and insane. I, like, <laughs> I said, I'll watch half of it and I'll watch the next half next morning. Yeah. I watched the whole thing. And was so, it was nice. It's two hours and 15, right? Something like that. No, it's three hours. It's yeah. like three hours. 50. Yeah, it's not it's 250. Long. It's long. Long. 50? Yeah. It is a super yeah. long. Well, that's two quick. hours, 50 minutes. It goes yeah. quick. 100, it, it, it 107, go 170 minutes. Nick, yeah. Nick, no talking. Sean's talking. It does, it's a three hour movie that feels like it's five hours long, dude. <laughs> it, it, you know, it was, I'm not saying it's not long. It was long. Um, but. You know, I have to say, I it kept my interest, and plus, I'm 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 watching for the purposes of this of the show. Yeah. So, it, I mean, I'm 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 like I'm staying with this, but uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a labor. I enjoyed it, mm-hmm. and I and I think the after I I watched it and I reflected on the next day, I had a more of an appreciation for the film. Mm-hmm. Um, I I, I definitely th- it's amazing when I saw no soundstage and the, what they were able to accomplish, and just the gunplay. Um, mm-hmm. I was, you know, I thought that Val Kilmer with the weapon, like he looked like he was born to to fire that weapon. I read yeah. a lot about his training, um, so I, I I I do have an appreciation for it. It's like it's a tough, like a three hour movie for me is a tough revisit mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah, but I would I have to say I probably you know again after our discussion I'll probably I'll probably revisit. Um, cool. I, I think I have an, more of an appreciation than I did when I saw it the first time. So so Nick, let me bounce it over to you. Do you think that it would be more impactful to you if it was a shorter film. Cause it seems like the length for you is also seems to no, be a, a, I mean, a, a bugaboo. No, if, I mean, I've seen long movies where I'm like, ah, I could have been cut a half hour here or there, like dark night, you know, things like that, but I'm mm-hmm. um, still a great movie, you know, but for this, the length was just part of it. Um, as I was rewatching it now, cause the last time I saw it was in the movie theaters when it first came out mm-hmm. and I walked out of it thinking, okay, it's just another movie. I mean, there were moments I enjoyed of it, but there were, I see the plot holes that I didn't like. And I, Al Pacino's overacting. I'm sorry. I mean, this is like <laughs> that. That's like I love Al Pacino. He's one of my favorite favorite actors of all time. Oh, the he disdain was, on Christie's face right he now. He was doing a totally different movie than every other character in this there, film. There's Nick, a reason, a reason what? for it. So oh, because you believe, you, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, believe, I believe him. I believe Al Pacino. Okay. He said, he yeah. said, yeah, yeah I know what he said. said. Hang on, hang on, hang on. When he when he finally saw the movie at the screening, probably with everybody else, he's like, "Holy crap! I was doing a totally different movie than everybody else." So he starts walking around saying, "Yeah, I played it like he was on cocaine throughout the whole movie." Dude, he was just every cliche that people have come to know about Al Pacino mm. is in that performance. Well, he's I, a great you know, actor. I love him. It's a I, no, great no, no, role, no. but I, he I, is wrong. I don't think I've he's got, doing I've a parody of himself about that. that. He totally is. Yeah. Almost every scene, he has it, to do it, a yell. He has to do a scream. It could. It, it could takes be. you out of the movie. It could be. It, it could be. I've, I've got an observation that I picked up today watching that because that's a lot of people make that, right? It's very easy to, if you want to do some Al Pacino impressions, you can watch this, this and you watch Scent of a Woman and you've got mm-hmm. like enough material there. Um, but what I did notice to, to, to Nick's point about the overacting and the yelling it, it is, it's actually it, there's actually a little bit finer detail in there because what I did notice is that when he did the overacting kind of the the big performances, it was always with criminals. Okay, yeah. it was always yeah. with people when he went to the club, That's when he fair. talked to the to the to the confidential informants, when he when he would talk to people that he didn't have respect for, he was almost a different character. But when you mm-hmm. see he's at the crime scene. Uh, dealing with the dead bodies and stuff. He is, he is sedate when he's, when he's talking about the robbery, they used the shape charge. They did this. I think it's, it's almost like the, he's, he's a separate person or he's a different character when he's dealing with like, you know, the criminal element, he's got to be bigger and broader because when he's and, and like, he was never like that with De Niro. Cause he's got respect for him. He's never like that 
with his with his team because he's got respect for his team. That's a good point. point. I really really did. And I didn't I didn't really pick up on it until today when I was watching. I'm like, because I was watching that. I'm like, because I we all love those scenes. Like, give me all you got, you know, and (laughs) he's got a great ass, you know, but there are always scenes when he is trying to intimidate someone with a criminal element to them. But when he's with his team, he's not really like that as much. You know, Dan, I I might have to to your point, Dean, he says that he's got, he's got to be on the edge. He's got to be he's got to be what he's chasing. So when he's yeah, doing he that, it. he's sure. he's yeah. over, so there, there's one one scene in particular when he comes home and and um, his wife's like, "Where were you? Where are you?" And and he's like, "You know, he's like, I'm I'm sorry if the if the goddamn chicken got and I he pa- and he pauses scene. and it's 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 not overly got- dramatic." He's like a, a, a overcooked and he's just exhausted and it's he's That's, so underacting I, and and I, so I, I agree with you. Dead that. bodies on the street, Nadine. Yeah, I'm sorry, Justine. The goddamn <laughs> chicken. It almost seems like he forgot his line. No, but yeah, no, but he's so, he, but he's so stressed. Yeah. He's so stressed. So, Dean, I think you yeah. nailed it. Is when he's with the criminals is when he's he's being boisterous and he's being loud and and. So Nick, well, you're wrong. Intimidate. He's got to be right. intimidated. <laughs> one, one for but us. Listen, he's, he's not, not wrong. He's not wrong. wrong. I'll give you. I'll give you a point. These are his opinions. Is, They're not that wrong. Is, that is They're a great wrong. point because you know, Christy, to your point, that scene that you mentioned just now that does stick out in my head because I was like, I love his performance with that one because it was underplayed, and I was like, wow, that's a moment where he could have been over the top the way it was written. Yeah. And he really underplayed it, it's, and it worked he, so well. Yes, even yeah, Natalie Portman, well, he doesn't overplay the scene when he finds her in the bathtub. He could have went up, above right. and been like very yeah, dramatic yeah. with that, and he's well, not. But if people, if you're people saying, that have respect for it, because because you saw when 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 he finds Justine and Ralph, he yells right. at Ralph that way too, like "Sit down!" Right. Like when he's going to mm-hmm. get up. But it's it's, it's for people that he doesn't have respect though, for. You know? know, and it's like you know, if if he is doing it intentionally, then it's like. Is he doing it to intimidate the criminals and the bad element? I or think is so. he making them laugh at him? Because I'm like, if anybody says that to me, I'd laugh in their face. It was I like think they, so to, to make them think that he's crazy, footage. that he's a little crazy. Like, we can't, we okay. don't know what this guy's. He starts hey, singing, he starts doing whatever. You I'm going I'm I mean, to watch it again and just. Okay. Keep Sean, I mean, Sean, does, Sean, what did you think? Does that make sense? Because Pacino is, he was coming off of Scent of a Woman and he was mm-hmm. coming off being the guy that you do the impression of like that. You know, I'm going to take a flamethrower to this place. And then he he comes out with this film that kind of has those underpinnings to it, but but there was this whole other like I said there was this whole other aspect to it of of as 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 like as far sw- swinging the pendulum one way it swings the other way to mm-hmm. him being very docile as well. I think I think you made a, an excellent point because you know having just seen it and you know it's fresh in my mind. You're right. The the uh, over the top Al Pacino is. You know, select their selective moments, but because there are many, you know, yeah. it. You think that's seems, yeah. You, that kind of resonates. But like Christy, you were saying you were watching The Offer, and the guy who plays Pacino in The Offer, the young Pacino, Great. is amazing. Amazing. But that Pacino doesn't exist anymore. I know yeah. he was no. younger, but oh no. But he, that, like, so, you know, the, the, those early Pacino days, like he was a different, a totally different actor. So oh, it's, yeah, he, but he that that Pacino disappeared in. He probably, I, I mean, I guess uh, author, I, I, author, sense of a, I, I, I <laughs> think we all kind of pinpoint sense of a woman when he started to become Maybe a character. Scarface, uh, yeah. yeah, Scarface when he started to become a character, which I think is also himself. overrated. There we go. Uh oh, that, that, <laughs> that is that takes the top for me. Rep- revelations are uh, revelations. Not sense of a woman, but uh, Scarface. I can't yeah. stand that film. Yeah, I'm not a huge Scarface yeah. fan, but I bet it's Nick is. So... No, but I, I Nick, do, no, I but do Nick, like Scarface. Yeah. No, but you make a really good point because I that, that I, I, see that I don't get, Nick. I Nick. really don't get that. <laughs> because wow. it, listen, no, because when people look at Scarface, that's like meant to be over the top and campy and yeah. like this gangster. Oh, over then the top. it's okay. This, everybody's no, because no. everybody calls Heat a masterpiece and like this amazing. And I just think it's, it's overrated. It's a masterpiece. I think <laughs> it's not a masterpiece. It's amazing. I think it's. I think so. I mean, let's you know, let let let's kind of circle. Let's let's kind of hit it from here. Then let's look at some of the films that came out in 1995, just real okay. quick, mm-hmm. and you'll see if it's a masterpiece or not. Uh, Heat versus Showgirls. Mad at Heat, of Heat. course. Yeah. Okay. Heat versus Batman Forever. Two Kilmer films. Heat. All right. Heat versus Casino. 
Uh, well, I, I hate I one. hate I, I hate casino, but I would oh, pick Jesus casino. <laughs> I would probably pick casino, and I'm not a big casino guy, but. I've seen that more. That is long. Yeah. That's long too. Nick. Yeah, that's long too. How, I actually about, think not, I like Heat over Casino. Okay. I like. And I like heat, Casino. Sort of how about Heat versus Seven? That came out in '95. Oh, well, seven, now. seven oh. by a mile. Seven is a great I have movie. To, uh, I, would, I would call. I would call Seven um, David Fincher's masterpiece. Okay. Sean, and I know Sean why do I have to pick movie. Seven? Brad Pitt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about Heat versus Twelve Monkeys? Twelve Monkeys that, for sure. I don't remember Twelve Monkeys. What about Brave one, more, one more from 95, and then we'll stop. Heat versus Usual Suspects. Um, usual I, Suspects. Usual Suspects. All, 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 right. way. all the way. What about Braveheart? Braveheart? Braveheart, yeah. For sure. Yeah, there was a lot of great films. Those, but, you know, those, that was the era where these epic films were still being made, right? Braveheart is an epic. It's long. I don't think you yeah. – That's yeah, three you, hours, I, Nick. I, I love yeah. Braveheart. It's not, it's not just the mm. length, though. You know, it's like huh. – it's, it's That's what she said. <laughs> Wow. I wasn't going there. Yeah. And there it goes. <laughs> twenty minutes. Twenty minutes in. <laughs> twenty minutes in. But at least it was me. But, um, <laughs> um, no, but but you know, ninety five was still that era, right? Braveheart is is an epic film. I think no, I don't think you can't say that the scope of of Heat is is not epic. Maybe not that it's not one of those like. Lawrence of Arabia or where it, it goes over like someone's whole life where it's this big epic in that sense. It's epic in its scale and what it's trying and the story that it's telling. It is br really, I'm going to say, brilliantly weaving major characters and minor characters, their story. And, and uh, some of these minor characters don't get like Dennis Haysbert does not get a lot of story time. Great you know immediately he's an ex-con. He's struggling. He, he's he's, he's yeah. trying to go straight. He's got the support <laughs> of his girlfriend or wife. And, he, and he's, de you know, like you're getting so much in, in small character bites and all of these characters, you don't know when you're watching a film where, why, why are they telling us his story? And then they mm -hmm. drop him for a while. You know, why is Wayne grow so important? And then at the end, all of this stuff just collides at the end. So it is, the, this could have easily been a movie. You're right, Nick. This could have been an Al Pacino movie about him trying to find these, these guys doing a heist with and cut a lot of that out. Or it could have been a film about Robert De Niro doing a heist and cutting all that other stuff out. And, and those could have been two, two decent two hour movies. What you got instead mm -hmm. was Michael Mann just weaving in all of these other stories, taking his time with it, getting to know the characters and then everything at the end just collides. Eric, is that, is that, what do you think? Is that kind of absolutely in, in, the, in the ballpark? Um, it's 20 years of, of research. The guy is a criminal. He's a, he's a criminal. Uh, he's obsessive about crime and all his films were like that. What's remarkable about it is like this, if this were made today, it would be a series. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. It would be an HBO thing, 12 episodes long, maybe even another season. Yep. I have no doubt that this movie was an inspiration for things like the wire and shows of that ill. So the way, so the fact that he could, tell this story in two hours and 50 minutes uh and, and like you say dean with all those with all those characters it, it's brilliant i mean it's a brilliant piece of writing yes there are moments in the film that i i you know that i i have issue with but uh for overall i think it's it's really really well well told we'll get, to the, we'll get to the nitpicky stuff at the end and we will yeah. get to all that I'm, yeah. I'm sure we all have our our, our nitpicks um Christy, do you think this is the the last great film that Pacino and De Niro did separately? You know, not not together because they did Righteous Kill after this. But do you think was this that was this their swan? Was this the end of an era for them? You know, it's funny. I um I looked at uh, Pacino's IMDb, and he didn't do that much after this that is so noteworthy. Um, again, because I think he started to really become that caricature of himself. Um. De Niro, what did, uh, no, because De Niro started veering in the 2000s into like meet the parents and stuff like that. So this probably for both of them was, was the, the, the end of, of these, them being these type of character actors as we know it, mm -hmm. I would, I would, I would say. Um, and that's, and that's also, it, it's also, um. Somewhat makes this movie sentimental in that way, because when you look at it and you've watched Pacino and De Niro, even from like what Sean said, like this young Pacino, where he has a completely 
different voice. Like he wasn't drinking scotch yet and smoking cigarettes. And he's, 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 you know, he's, he's, you know, timid. Yeah, more of like a nerdy, he had like more of a nerdy yeah, voice. He's, you know? Yeah, he's, it was all a little nasally. He's timid and stuff. And then as we've watched him grow into the, the actor he became, and the same thing with De Niro. Look at De Niro, like in Mean Streets, he's, you know, huh. 110 pounds soaking wet and, and, you yeah. know, you know, punk in that yeah, movie. <laughs> he's, he's awkward. And then we, yeah. we get to this point there, there's some sentimentality about it, especially after coming from the Godfather part two. So yeah, I, I think this was it for them and in, in, for, for this, this way of acting for them. You know, Christy, it's interesting when I first, when I put the movie on and I saw the way they looked, I'm like, this is how I think of these guys. Yeah. Like, that look yeah that was an time about that Definitely. and I, it was yeah. like shock it took me a while to get used to seeing them that young and they're not that young <laughs> no, the they they're, yeah. they're, they're in their 50s that's young. i know yeah. but now they're like pacino's 82 de niro 79 they're like pushing and it's like but that's how i think of those guys yeah. like, that's, so that's, that's probably the last movie where prime, I, you right? get that look yeah so uh, yeah, yeah, right. again it's the sentimentality of it right sean it's just like yeah those are that's them for me Nick, you think this was them in their prime? This was it? I think that was the moment for them to come together, for sure. And that's how they hyped it up for the movie, you know. And, uh, and I'll be honest, I, I think De Niro's performance is one of his best, you know, and he's had some great roles in his life. I think the way he performed it in this movie. Well, and I think that's um, what's important, too, though, Nick. It, it, another, another great point you make is there's got to be a, a yin to the yang. If you've got Pacino as, as this over the top character, you know, De Niro, if anything, pull is pulled way back. De Niro is usually a pretty low key actor anyway. Uh, his portrayal of Neil McCauley is really pulled back. A man of few words, uh -huh. but of decisive action, of, of like a master strategist. And again, he portrays this without a lot of. It's a, a lot of looks like like that scene in the in, when he goes to get coffee and and Edie kind of mentions you know like what do you, what do you why are you interested in what I'm looking at and what I'm doing like he's already got you know like very few words but he gets across like that he, you know he's already like guarded against people and um you know and and I think that you needed that you know if they both were going were going for it then it would be a laugh fest right if both characters were just shouting at the table across each other it wouldn't. It wouldn't work, but if you've got the one up there, you need the one lower. And there's no two better actors to pit. You know, th there's no one better to put with Pacino in that mode than De Niro, who can kind of take that and not and not kind of bounce off of it and, and part and play into it, but accept it as that's the way the character is. But do you think that big scene was really? I mean, it just to me that scene did, doesn't make sense. To me, that scene is made, and I know he had written it before. It was real. Like, that 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 scene right? actually happened in real life. This movie is based on a series of events right. that happened in the '60s, and that that you know that police officer or detective did meet yeah, the they real had coffee. Neil McCauley. They for really coffee. went for coffee. Yeah, right. oh, it is. I'm just saying, like real life, it can be. It's like cinematic, is what I'm talking about. It's like the way yeah. the movie, and to me, like it just doesn't make sense. Like to me, it's like it it it, it played even when I saw it in the theater. I'm like, I don't know. I thought, okay, it's a setup maybe for the final scene. And I thought, the, you know, it would give us a bigger payoff mm -hmm. at the end. But I don't know. To me, it just play, seemed contrived. Does it not make sense because it's Al Pacino and Robert De Niro? Or is it, could it, I think if it it's were because, any other actors playing that scene? I think it's because scene, it was Pacino and De Niro. And that and was the hype the was built. To, exactly. To, you know, for yeah, that together. Scene. Yeah. And I just felt like. I actually, I actually scene really like that the scene. Hype? What's you that? Want? I really like that scene. I, I think it's is, necessary it, in the film. Is it, I thought, is, I thought is it was it well worth acting. the hype, though. Yeah, I don't it, think so. I, I that think seems to be like this is the movie right here. The meeting, the the meeting of them, like that. People made such a big production of that because it's the first time they're together I mean, in a scene. I, you know, I and go ahead, go ahead, Christy. I'm sorry. I think even less of that. Um, forget about the hype. I, I think just if you're if you're really Im immersed in the, in the film. And you're, you're, you're these two characters coming together. And like Dean said, it's, it's, if you know the, the backstory, it's, it, this really actually happened. It's, it's based off of a true yeah. story that it's, it, it's just, a, it's just a really well done scene with two really mm -hmm. good actors. For, forget about, for, forget about the hype that they haven't been together since Godfather part two, but I think it says a lot about their characters in the film. Like, and and yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I think it's, it it's important for that. 
I just yeah, don't you're, see you're the motivation right. for the two characters to be together, and especially for De Niro's character to pretty much be like, "You're right, I'm the guy, I'm the, I'm the yeah, criminal." I, well, here's, here's but they're the same person. Yeah, here's, here's, they admit they're the here's, here's, same person in, in that scene. Here's the here's the, here's the motivation, are. though. The, what the motivation is is that Al Pacino's character is so world weary and so beaten down by these run of the mill crimes that he finally runs into somebody that he not only respects, but almost has like a hero worship for. Mm -hmm. yeah. He is so impressed with how, you know, how strategic he is, how he can't be caught. Uh, you know, he's so slick. They, they get away with stuff like with the, like, when they were to there. do the jewel, when they were going to do the jewel robbery and he walked away because mm -hmm. he heard the little guy hit the gun on the back, you know, like, so he is so impressed with this guy that he has to, it's almost, he's almost like, like Macaulay's enigmatic at this point. Like I have to meet with this person. You know, and and De, and De Niro, you said, why would he say this? Because he knows who he is. He knows, you know, they've been playing cat and mouse, right? There was the scene when they went and met in the container yard, and and then they came out, and so this way De Niro could get the pictures of him. So yeah, they, they knew just been the made. game they were yeah. playing. They're, they're, he's not ever going to deny. He didn't say that he did this or that. He just says, "Don't take down scores." Well, that's what I do best, you know. So it really was cutting down to the nature of what they both are. Like Christy said, they're they're opposite sides of the same coin. They're equal. But for Pacino, it was hero worship. Yeah, yeah, that's why he wanted to meet yeah. this. Like he wanted to see what makes this guy tick because because he's never met a criminal like this before. That but Nate is tells so, him is that so well team. organized. Yeah. Nate tells him that uh, yeah. John Voight's character says, "You know, he's he's impressed with you when he's talking to Macaulay." Yeah. He's he's like mm -hmm. I'm, I, he's you know the hat, this guy this, his name's Vincent Hannes he's, he's impressed with you it's like okay I think that's what sets the scene up is is he wants that you know Pacino's character wants to have that conversation like just to see what see what makes him tick and and yeah De Niro was kind of if you look at that scene when he pulls up De Niro never looks at him when he's getting pulled over because he's not sure what's going to happen he's like do you want to have coffee yeah. De Niro doesn't answer for a while there's like a good four or five seconds and he's like sure. He's like, okay, follow me. <laughs> and then they, you know, you know they, they go to the, you know, so it's, and, and it just sets up this great two actors just in, in a, it's a low key scene and it's very relevatory. They talk about, you know, the, the whole, what the dreams mean to each other, what their philosophy on life is, is basically the same exact thing. They're just coming at it from opposite ends. I, I don't think, you know, I don't, I didn't care about that scene. Like when the movie was coming out, like, oh, this is the scene for me. It's, it's, it's not even the centerpiece of the film. But it's just a really important part of the Pacino character kind of dialing in to someone that he really kind of, you know, cause he, it, it ties up at the end when he holds his hand. Yeah. I like, I like that. You know, they didn't, didn't need to be this big thing at the end of talking and, and, you know, having a verbal battle. The, the reality is a cop is going to shoot somebody and a bad guy is going to shoot at somebody that was, mm -hmm. and they said that, but then at the end, when, when De Niro reaches his hand out and Pacino just grabs it, they were, they were of the same, you know, they, they were brother. They could have been you know, like the same thing. We could have been brothers in another life. Type I thing. like, I like that last shot, but did you think that whole finale though was a little contrived too? And then like a stereotype because having, having Pacino be the one that you have all these other officers and he's going after him with the shotgun and cause and he's obsessed and he shoots him down. Mm -hmm. He's, he's, he's judge, obsessed. He's obsessed. An executioner. He's the hunter. Cop. He becomes like De Niro. He's not he's gotta he's be. the hunter. And, and I, he I says thought, as much in the but movie, I yeah. but I thought it was yeah. like, it was great how, even though they are similar in many ways, they're two sides of the spectrum, right? Yeah. And I think that final scene was the payoff, and I was waiting for that. And I was waiting for it to be like, okay. And I, I don't think the payoff worked out. I like the final. It was, sad. It was, it was a sad together, ending. It was but, a sad ending. I mean, it was kind of, there, was, there was no way, uh, Nick. I don't think there was any way to end it but that way. Like he couldn't yeah. get mm -hmm. away. Um, yeah, and, he couldn't get and, away. and Hannah had to kill him. Hannah had to kill him. And Hannah couldn't get killed. He couldn't kill him and get away. You know, like. There, there was no, there was no other way. I don't for think it to he had end. to tell him. Yeah, I he's think, not going to go back. Think, to, he said, "I'm not going to go back to jail." I mean, for the story and and for the climax, that that's what Michael Mann wanted, and it worked. Um, and again, whether whatever reality was and everything, um, I don't know, man. I, I just it didn't. The payoff didn't work for me. Sure, Except what for do that you think? Hand holding. I like the hand holding. What do you think? Did yeah. the hand holding work for you? <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't know. It was late when I watched that. So, uh, <laughs> I, Sean, Sean woke up and the credits were playing. Yeah, no. It, 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 the, I felt the end was, for some reason to me, felt a little bit like, uh, all right, what happened? You know, like, is it going to happen? Is it going to, like, a lot yeah. of, I felt like it was very long, like, to get to that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I read that there were one ending was that they both get, they both kind of 
do like a sh- they both shoot mm-hmm. and they both mm-hmm. die. I don't know how I would have liked that. Like a I Reservoir think, Dogs type thing. Yeah, kind of like a res. I think I think they I think yeah you had to have a a winner and a loser and I think yeah. that's that's what we had to have. But like, who's the who's the winner here and who's the loser though? That's a good question. When you when you consider yeah well when you consider which is why they bothered to tell all of these little side stories about their personal lives and then you get to the point yeah Vincent Hanna won the day so to speak but is it what does he have right at the end yeah, of his day. life now yeah, right because he's got I, I, nothing to go home to he's you know he's lost he's this the, his obsession his yeah. job became so in a it sense he, he's lost he's he's lost out on a lot of things too but yeah and, and it was that long shot at so. the end too after he killed de niro there was just a long shot of pacino's eyes yeah, yeah. just kind of like off. looking he was like, looking off to like, the kind side. Of like yeah. kind of like kind of like yeah he you know it, it was bravado talk in the diner like oh i don't want to have to put you down but brother you're going down but now he actually did it you know almost like he had like this is the one criminal that he had sympathy for because he was so much like him and and mm-hmm. it felt like such kindred spirits that that when they hung on that shot on on him at the end it was kind of like you know yeah that now this is like half the fun or half the thing was the chase right because he says that to justine all i am or you said it best all i am is what i'm chasing right Right. And that's all he is, is, is he's consumed by the chase. But, and- but once he kills De Niro, well, he's looking off to the side because it's what, what meaning does his life have now? He has to find someone right. else. And yeah, so, that's right. so he is, he is now dead as well. He's just living. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, he's existing. Yeah. So, you know, and, and so this, it's, this is, everything. Yeah, it's, it's, this is his life and it's not a very attractive life. Look what it does to him, you know. I got look what it does to his family. Look what it does to you know, um, you know, almost all like he's like putting Macaulay out of his misery too. Like as I think he 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 wouldn't have would he truly been happy with, you know, with Edie? Who knows? I mean, I, I you know that's one of the things that I didn't like about the film was I didn't I didn't buy that relationship whatsoever. One I that, that that chemistry yeah. between him and her was just mm-hmm. not there for me. Yeah, I agree. And I guess it's done on purpose because it wasn't meant to, to you know, to be a mm-hmm. thing. So, but that was another plot hole for me because here's a guy who <laughs> that was his mantra that he learned from his mentor. It's like walk away, mm-hmm. right? And you know, he suddenly meets this girl and he's like willing to throw that all out the window. You know, I, I like the payoff yeah. at the end. I thought that was a great scene when he comes out and he has that chance. But he, you know, it's like it's like no nope, one run away. And he knowing that probably he might get killed too, you know, it's like, but he's not going back to the joint, right? He's, it was actually so, 30 seconds too when he made it as, as he made the decision. Was it, was it really? So they, yeah, they said it's actually 30 seconds from when he sees Vincent <laughs> Hanna, Edie, and makes the choice to run. It's all 30 seconds. They t- they, so Sean, they, Sean, what mm-hmm. were you what were you going to say, Sean? Well, I know you were I trying to get jump in. That scene at the when they all having dinner, his crew is having dinner, and everybody has somebody at the dinner, yeah, except for him. Yeah. And that's when he makes the call to eat. So I, I think a part of him might have felt like he was missing out on something, mm-hmm. and that you know he does this job the last one, like he could have probably walked away, but he just, I guess, just gets enticed back into it but he was ready i think he there was a moment of like reflection of like maybe uh, maybe the barbecues and and the picnics are 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 the way to go even his crew members seem to have something other well they had choice they made, they both made choices right yeah. i mean he could have he could have just left he didn't right. have to go up there hey, and kill Wayne when it rains you get wet well, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the thing it's like he that but that certain something that he, he felt it needed to be done you know, I got to kill this guy. This is a son of a bitch. He's got to go. You know? Well, that, there was a little foreshadow. That was, there was there. a consequence there, yeah. you know, to that. Yeah. And wait, the decision wait. for Vincent to kill Robert De Niro, he could have, he could have let him live. He could have. That's, that's not who he is. It's just, I, 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 this is my job. It's a choice between you and some poor bastard that you're going to make into a widow. <laughs> There's the impression. There you go. There we go. Brother, ah, you are going good. down. Sean, good I think it's it, that, that, that scene, and I agree with you, shows he's, he's, He's not a machine. He's a man, Rocky Four. But right. he, he, he's reflective because, yeah, he, 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 he's planning on retiring. He wants. He's going to go to New Zealand. He's going to. He's yep. done. He, he's has all his money. I mean, there's that. That like Eric said, he, he just can't let go of things. But yeah, he's sitting there and he's looking around at everyone, and everyone goes home to someone. Yep. Everyone has someone. He doesn't even have furniture. 
Yeah, well, no. that's when true. When I get around to it, <laughs> yeah. when I get around to it. So let, let's talk a little bit about Wayne Grove because he's a very interesting character. And this whole this whole movie actually, he is the he is the tipping point on this whole movie. I don't know if you guys realize that if Wayne Grow got killed in the beginning of this film, the mm-hmm. rest of this film would not have existed. Mm. That's right. That's why and, part of it. And, 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 and Nick would have been stuff. happy. It would have been. <laughs> it would have been twenty five minutes because, long. <laughs> Because if, if Wayne Grove got killed, Al Pacino still would have still would have caught them on the heist. He still would have gotten the stuff about, you know, slick and all that. He would have had that information. But that's as far as their investigation would have went because he would because then Wayne Grove got hooked up with Van Zant and found out about the bank robbery. So that so the character of Wayne Grove is despicable and as disgusting and as horrifying as he is. Um, this whole story pivots on that one scene that you think is a throwaway you mm-hmm. think oh they're gonna kill this guy they open the they open the hood and, and it's got the garbage bags and you know what's happening it's like okay yeah. yeah um and he gets away and then the movie just kind of leaves him for a while and, and goes and does other things and then wayne grows getting a beer and you know yeah i'm looking to do stuff and they don't really he don't even wait it's not like wayne grow realizes what happened and the power he has to the story he that can, character just kind of continues kill he's killing prostitutes he's doing whatever he's been doing us as the viewer only realize what his what his importance was, but the character doesn't within the film, which I think is brilliant. It's not like, oh, I have this information. He's just kind of going on his way. Mm. And then he does say it. Uh, he says it to Van Zandt. He says, Neil, he's, he, Macaulay is, is never going to forget. He's going to come back. And he does. And and that's the scene that Nick is talking about when they're driving um, and with Edie at the end, and he's about to go to the airport and he veers off, right? He, he actually smiles for a moment. Like when he's going, yeah. when he's going through the bright lights of the tunnel, he smiles for a moment. Like I got away with it. I got away. And then his frown turn, he turns into a frown and veers off to the, to the thing is, Oh yeah, it's got to take care of this one thing real quick. Cause he can't, yeah. it, it's not, not let his, anybody it, his nature to leave loose ends. Like he's not, well, a loose it's not just that, but it's also what, his reputation's at stake yeah. here too. He's got, he's got that ego. He's got that reputation. Same thing with the, He's obsessed. Yeah. Same thing with Pacino. Just like Hannah. Yeah. Just like Hannah. Yeah, same yeah. thing. He's, because they're the you know, same person. He's not going to let it go. <laughs> so that, but, that's why he, you know, Hannah doesn't, you know, he doesn't put up with mistakes. Like he's, he's screaming yeah. at the team every time they they messed up. And, you know, he could have screamed at that one guy that with, with the gun in the, in the trailer. Oh, when he, when he got out of the truck, it looked like he wanted to belt him. Oh, like he, my God. He, like, yeah. put, like, he could have ripped his head off. He did his, his, he did his, he did his Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross thing where he pulled his, his jacket back and he kind of put his hands on his hips. Like he was going to, he was like, wanted to deck the guy and he just kind of like, it's not even worth it. But know? like we talked about though, the fact that he, <laughs> that Macaulay knew enough to, you know, and there, maybe there was a level of respect there. That's why he didn't go, go off on this guy. Cause it's like, okay, now, now I really know who I'm dealing with. Cause this guy, yeah. you know, that one, that one little thing caused him to walk away. Yep. This guy's big. This guy is, you know, but he's good. You're going to walk and you're going to let yeah. him. Yeah. I would, I that's would say. There you go, Sean, from- that's too. <laughs> the Wayne Grow mistake is at the very beginning for them just picking yeah. him for this job. And that's where I'm like, these yeah. guys are professionals. These guys have been doing this forever. They're a, a tight knit yeah. group. You saw at the end when they needed another, you know, uh, driver for the car, yeah. they went to somebody they'd worked with before. So why would they pick this guy who's mm-hmm. obviously a loose cannon and insane, right? To, to, to do this. They didn't like know. He, but, yeah, right, I mean, you that's, know, you hear- that's the pivoting moment. Yeah. And then when they try to kill him, they start doing it in the diner in front of all these witnesses and out in the parking lot when car, <laughs> cars are going away. Yeah. It's like, do a godfather. Put him in the trunk and take him out in the woods or something and, you know, leave the cannoli. Right? Pop, Nick, pop him there. <laughs> take well, the, it was kind of like Take the gun, leave like the cannoli. Fellas, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. But, but it was kind of like good fellas. It's like they, they did walk out of the diner and he was like, mm-hmm. cut this guy loose, give him his money. Yeah. Let's go out to the car, give him his that money and premise, get rid of him. But they were just going to pop him. Nick, I'm going to give you, I'm going to throw you a bone right now. So when, when, they're a tight, they're a tight knit group, and they're they work together all the time. And then Wayne Grove comes to the truck, you know, and and you know Michael Tom Sizemore is like, "What's your name?" He puts his hand up, and he's like, "Wayne Grove," and he's like, "All right." That was all he needed to say to as as right. like, proof as, as who he was. Like that's how it works in the criminal underworld. Yeah. It's just you like say your name. Like, all right, I, maybe you could be a little. Oh. I, I, uh, fun, fun little fact about a, Wayne. Do you Grove? have an application? <laughs> I don't need one. Did you fill out? <laughs> did you fill out your employee application? As long as, long as you can get in the truck. Fun, funny fun fact about Wayne Grove, Sean. I don't know if you know this, but Xander Berkeley, who played Ralph in this <laughs> film, played Wayne Grove in L.A. Takedown. He played yeah, the part of Wayne Grove in yeah. the L.A. Takedown. Was the original 
uh, it was going to be a series that Michael Mann was making. Uh, he wanted to pitch it to a, you know, to the, to the, uh, network and they said nah whatever so they, they made it into a tv movie called la takedown which the heat is basically a direct remake of and uh xander berkeley was the terrifying wing girl. although in the scenes that we've i, I just sent everybody a scene from that film I, i'm not sure wing girl was was as tough as he is in, as kevin gage is in this you, film you do know well. that ted levine was offered wing girl and turned it down yes yeah. uh because he didn't want to get pigeonholed because he was coming off silence of the lambs and yep was like I, I so he chose to be bosco but he was so it's the, yeah he plays bosco he, and he gets yeah. he gets blasted by val He's, kilmer yeah. he, 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 he could have easily too. stepped off yeah. the productionist movie and, and, and into monk as Stottlemyre because he's almost the same character. It's like, oh, you know, the, and then uh, told, in oh, 2003, Wangro went, uh, the guy that played Wangro went to prison. Yeah, he's acting, yeah. so I guess he's, he's no he, joke. He's no, no joke. joke. Shakespeare, is, Shakespeare in the in the in the prison. So he is a cowboy right. looking for anything heavy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Sean, what do you think of this? Does this continue Val Kilmer's excellent streak of supporting? Does this make the case that he was, should have been? A, he was probably should have concentrated on supporting roles. I, I we'll get to the was... elbow, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I like I like this performance in this. I I think he I, uh I found he was impressive, uh, not too over the top. I think uh, I, lo I loved his, I loved, uh, it just was very cool. With the, you know, very, very, it seemed like that was a natural fit for him, the role, like his role in the, in the heists, you know, with the gun. And yeah. I just, I, I found him uh, pretty impressive and a uh, pretty solid performance. Yeah, it was kind of like a, a mentor scholar relationship. The two of them had like, mm -hmm. like, like De Niro's the character Arab Macaulay parent. was always kind of the caretaker of him and, and like when they went to, uh, you know, when they went to for the fake pickup from Van Zant, it was it was Kilmer that was on the roof with the with the high power rifle, like picking. I mean, of course, you know, Tom Sizemore got in there with the shotgun too and just like blasted that guy in the truck. But yeah. uh, but they those two seem to have a and when and when Kilmer got shot during during that great you know the great shootout scene, you know, De Niro went over and got him. He didn't just kind of leave. Right. You know, that's the thing is, you know, you, you walk away, but he actually picked no. he kind of picked him up, and then and then later on. Brought him to the doctor, and then when he met with with John Voight's character, where is he? He, you know, like so. There was like a relationship that we don't know. Were they related? Yep. Was there something else? What was yeah. it? Did they he cared time? about him? They yeah, totally there, cared. there was there yeah. was that kind of you know um, camaraderie that that was different than what he had with Tom Sizemore Sizemore's character Michael. He was kind of like Michael was more of a business associate. You know, when they're talking about the the heist, is like, well, Michael, you know, you don't need this. You got bonds. You got real estate. You, you know. You you cut cut loose of this, you know. But Kilmer's character was oh, like it's kind of like where you go, I go type of thing. Yeah, and he's got mm -hmm. the gambling problem, which is yes, is that, Achilles' that, heel. Uh, Dean, while you're talking about that's, Kilmer, that's a motivator. <laughs> while you're talking about Kilmer and that 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 shootout scene, uh, I don't know if Sean knows this. Um, they use that in in training videos because Kilmer perfectly executes like loading and 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 reloading mm -hmm. a gun. Um, yeah. Where like that's how well they were trained when um for for, yeah. for those uh shootouts and i that think scene was Kil excellent. yeah kilmer's like he's like most proud of that of, of like anything yeah, well he's you know he's he's a method and, and you know what christopher nolan famously was inspired by this film during, for batman for dark knight and, oh, yeah. uh, and his dark knight was of, too his, long for nick as well yeah <laughs> his, his vision of gotham his vision but, of gotham was was full was based on this version of LA, which, which is, like I said, is its own character. So now Nick, what about the elbow? What about the Kilmer elbow? When I, first I, I have saw the story the theater. You when I first, I, I want to hear okay. the story. So okay. when I first went into the movie <laughs> theater in the theater, I was so distracted by that lump on his elbow <laughs> because yeah. the first time you really notice it and it's, and it's just so, and you, it's like, he's kind of like beaten up a little bit. And I was like, maybe this is going to be part of like some exposition or something, but we kind of forget about it. That was it. But the rest of the movie, I'm thinking like, what the hell's up with his elbow? What happened yeah. to his elbow? Yeah. So he had a tennis so ball. In, he had a tennis ball implanted into his. That's what it looks like. That's what he it had, looks like. like. I don't have what, no what idea. Happened, what... what happened is during the filming of the Doors, the movie The Doors in 1991, he did. He was doing a stage diving scene, uh, and the stuntman failed to catch him. Oh. And he broke okay. his arm, and then he ended up getting a cyst on his elbow. 
Oh, and I think okay. you see it in other films as well. But yeah, yeah like when, like when, one movie where he wears like a elbow thing to kind of hide it and everything. Yeah, mainly, yeah, that that scene when he wakes up in Robert De Niro's apartment and he's walking around in the t shirt and he's got this big giant like honking yeah, thing on like his it, elbow. Yeah, it yeah. is distracting, but and it's a little bruised around the two. So yeah. I just thought it when you first meet him box, in the film, you, know? you don't see it. It's not yeah. as prominent. You know, but uh, yeah, that scene, it's like, what the hell happened? Like, did he? Yeah, nice know. guys. Real nice. Real real life injury. <laughs> hey, man, it's Cut things the audience slack. notices, you know? I but didn't notice. That took you out. No. To his, it took me out the first time I saw it. That, that's, <laughs> why, that's why he hates the movie, The Elbow. <laughs> the Elbow. <laughs> Blame The Elbow. But to give Kilmer credit, it was such an underperformed role, but like very yeah. intense. And then there's that uh-huh. scene when he's in the apartment, when he flips out and throws. Yeah. Yes. That's an example of not overacting. That's an example of levels, you know, yes. as an actor. Mm-hmm. Kilmer got it right. Pacino in this movie did not. No, no, that's not true. We wow. already discussed Pacino's method here. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to revisit it. That's okay. It, he, could st- he could still not still be not- satisfied with it. That, yeah. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> you know, it... it like I said, you've got right. a movie that's stacked with actors, though. So no, it's great. If for, if for no other reason, this is fun to watch just to to pick out. And we have to talk about the female leads. We have to talk about Diane Venora. Yeah. Uh, we got to talk about Ashley Judd. You know, we, we've got to talk about Natalie Portman and Amy Brenneman. I mean, because they, you know, each one of those is a different type of support. And even Natalie Portman is a different type of support. You know, uh, Al Pacino gets two types. He gets he gets Diane Venora and he gets uh, Natalie Portman. Um, and it's very interesting th- those dynamics, you know, um, especially at the end, you know, the, tra- you know, it's not tragic, it, you know, but when, when Natalie Portman goes to his hotel, cause he had moved out mm-hmm. uh, and she goes to attempt to kill herself and, and, you that's know, that's not her, tragic. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. It's that's tragic, like, but she didn't die. I mean, it's tragic, die. but you know, and I think, um, I think, uh, and she's like, she chose her, his, her mother's like, she chose you. Yeah, but you know, despite, she chose yeah, you because despite all of this running around, him chasing these guys, he he's loved. There he always cared about her. He always cared about her. He always said, he's, "Where's he's your father?" He's there for her. Yeah. Where's the father? Where is this yeah. bastard? He's you know he's not here for her. And I love the scene where where he's driving in the car and then she, he sees her yeah. sitting there waiting for his her father once again. Who doesn't show up and he the car spins around and he picks her up. That's a great scene too. Yeah, it's, or was she so trying subtle. to? Or was she trying you know, to run away? Because he's like, "What are you doing here?" She goes, oh, "I just need to. I was wanted to be by myself." And it, like, she had a backpack. Yeah, I was yeah, thinking well. maybe she was very obviously very troubled. I was thinking maybe she was trying to run away too. Mm. Um, and he just happened. He, he kind of caught her, you know. And, and yeah. you know, she jumps in the car. She's like, "Hey, Mike," you know, <laughs> like, which is probably yeah. why she decided to make an attempt on her life in his apartment, in his mm-hmm. uh, hotel room, because then he'd probably find her and stop. it. She, yeah, she clearly really has she really like anxiety so issues. For help that you know, and, and she's probably would. bipolar. I, w- I would guess, yeah. in the, you know, in the, in the very beginning when she's looking for her berets or berets, and we're like, I have to have them. She's like, has, yeah. you know, uh, I I don't know who why she's that way, but you know, but let's talk about Diane Verona. I mean, she's 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 a good actress too. She's a, she's got that intensity. I liked her in uh, Bird, Clint Eastwood's Bird. She played Chan Parker. Uh, Charlie Parker's wife, so she she gave a really good performance there. I liked her in this film too. I thought she was real, very effective. Yeah. Like it, it wasn't overblown. It wasn't you know she gets a little bit dramatic at times, but that drama felt real to me. It's like yeah, you know yeah she doesn't her- buy his bullshit. She's not buying the bullshit that right. he's selling. Yeah, you know like yeah, yeah you do it. You know what? Remember when you hooked up with me, baby? <laughs> You're gonna have to share me with all the bad guy. You know. <laughs> You know, and, and she says, yeah, but I didn't know it was going to be like that. Like you were going to be this absent, you know, like yeah, yeah. You know, when we hooked up, baby. So, it, yeah, it's, yeah she, she's just a, a great foil for him. You know, she's doing drugs. She's taking, you know, whatever pills and whatever. And it's just right. kind of like he's like, yeah. whatever, yeah. you know, they, they're just kind of, you know, uh, yeah, she, she realized she's the most insightful to him, you know, mm-hmm. that that you're 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 a dead person kind of going through life and the only thing is is these dead people and you kind of sift through and you you hunt and that's all there is and everything else we're we're just left in the wake of it um so really brilliant of, uh, really brilliant stuff there i was recalling miami vice the the pilot episode where his ex-wife crockett comes home you know his partner had just been killed jimmy smith's you know he got blown up so he goes you know his his son's birthday party and he's late and he's drunk and he you know crockett's sitting there and she gives it to him later on like you the same thing like you you're just you're masquerading. You're acting like one of these players that you're running around with. It's, mm-hmm. it's insane. Like, what are you doing? It's like you're losing yourself. And I think that yeah. that's Hannah. That's most certainly Hannah. So it adds 
So I totally agree with Dean in the sense where it's, that's the reason for his, for that bravado and that in, in intensity in those scenes, because you see how tender he can be with, with family and, yeah. and such, but, but he's on stage on hand, when he's, yeah, when he's with the bad guys, he's got to be, but this is the life. This is the adrenaline. This is the rush. And I totally, and Michael Mann said it himself, said as much in the research, he's like, he's dealt with real cops who do this on the street every day. And they, then there, there is that real sense of, of yeah. dual of personality. Power. Of power and like once you're in the zone and you're chasing somebody down or whatever whatever it may be, that rush is real. It's you know so I I, I buy it. I totally buy it. Cool. Yeah. All right. So. Let's move on. Ashley Judd. <laughs> so, I, she's, in, 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 when we're, when we're, before we started recording, I mentioned Ashley Judd, and uh, there was some there was some some shots taken at Ashley Judd. Not, no, I they were not shots. Know they were. They were not shots. What, what was shots. It? Well, Eric, well, Eric first. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Yeah, I'm sick of it. So that, what, what was me, it, Eric? What bothered you about that? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I it bothered me, but it was just it was just it so just unexpected. Stands out. And what it what it really does for me, I guess, in in a way, it just recalls like uh, classic Hollywood. It's like one of those old like gangster movies mm -hmm. of the period. I think he's you know, playing a little. You know, Michael Mann's doing a little bit of that as well, taking some creative license there. And hey, let's. Uh, Make that a little, you know, beef that up a little bit, and let's make it more like that rapid fire, like mm -hmm. the girl, you know, the women in in those films back in the day, like you know, the the noir films and the and the, the gangster films, and uh, so that's what that's what I'm thinking when I when I see that scene. But it is a little off putting. It's like I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. You know, like it's just yeah, it's just so because she's so laid back most of the time. Like she's the 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 voice of reason for Val Kilmer. Yeah. Like what are you doing? Like you know like. You meet. You need to straighten up. You need, she's basically Diana Verona for him. Like you know, she's you know trying to get him to grow up, and and you know what do you you know, and yet she's fooling around with Hank Azaria, and it's just kind of like <laughs> Mo it, Mo yeah, from the Simpsons. She could. She could <laughs> you, if you notice, like she's a completely different person. Her hair's different in the scene. It's curly. It's like she she's trying to get out of that you know uh, yeah. mode, I guess, or just be somebody else. And again, it's another mask that's being worn. I think a lot of the characters are, you know, wearing masks in this film. There's a lot of that going on, you yeah. know, in the life and, you know. So. Well, everyone but uh, Edie is. Edie's the only yeah, honest, Edie's, Edie's the only Amy, honest, honest, honest Amy, adult you have in this film. Amy Brenneman did not want, did not want to do the film. When no. she read the script, she hated it. She was just like, I don't like the violence. She said there's no redeeming, there's no redeeming characters except, right. but that was yeah. the only one. And that's why Michael Mann was like, Manson, that's why you should, Edie. that's why you should do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but Dean, yeah. I, I actually like Ashley Judness. It's just that, that scene stands out. I do too. And I think she's a, her character is very similar to Kilmer's character. I think uh, I don't I don't know if she's his voice of reason because she's she almost seems child uh, childlike to me. Um, you know she's you know she's she's taking care of Dominic, but she knows what he does. She's you know, not in the dark about it, and yeah. it just I don't know. It seems like I, I don't know. She she feels it's not like Justine who is. Uh, an adult she's a woman and she's she you know she knows who pacino is uh, i don't think ashley judd's character is, is there with with um kilmer but um but i i, I yeah she, she knows what he does and how how it can help them but she, it almost feels like she also but, she just also needs to be taken care of like i don't yeah. think, like I, I we always talk about having these women in these films who are strong lead actresses that hold their own in it. And, and she holds her own in the film. I'm not saying that, but you look at someone like Justine and Justine's a strong character. Like, yeah. you know, she's, she, she could be a, yeah. she could be she could, a, she's, a, not, a, reliant. she's yeah. not reliant on him. No, she's going to go out and screw who she wants to screw. If you're not going to come around and I'm going to make him breakfast. Let him watch it. <laughs> you don't get to watch my television <laughs> set. <laughs> no, that was a bad one. But, uh, it was a bad but, one. But even actually Judd though, like look, consider, consider the ending when she knew exactly the tell she yeah. knew exactly what to do there so the obviously signal. she knows the life she yeah, understands that you know this is, she knows this is john peterson do. yeah she knows exactly that, that, now what that's a nitpick right they okay. picked the name john peterson <laughs> no no Here, here's a nip nick i'm gonna throw you a bone uh, I would, this, this was gonna be one of mine dean go ahead here's my nitpick sean sean let me know if this is yours as well this guy's wanted. He's got a jacket. They've got a photo of him. 
The cop down the street doesn't know who he's looking for because he gives an ID that says John Peterson. Like, this guy's I, name is Peterson. Okay, let him hair. go. He cut his he hair. Cut his hair. hair. Okay, but he's still Val Kilmer. Like, he's still, like, like they don't do, you never saw that on the news when they had different, like, he may have changed his, per, you know, changed his, his look and yeah. they show him with different things that he just, like, kind of drove away. I'm kind of like, that's the only, for me, that's the only throwaway part of it is if the cops are stopping somebody down at the end of the mm-hmm. road, they have to know who the, oh, this guy, he just, because he has a different ID, oh, this can't be him. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's it one of the problems, it's not right? This is John oh, Peterson. Was, was that a, yeah, was that a hole or was that, was that did you, did you notice that, Sean? Yeah, I thought it was a little bit like weird. How, how, did, how did they, well, you know, I think it just, I think that happens in films. Uh, and that's what I was thinking too, is, is a lot of the stuff that you see in this film is like, how do they get away? With, like, how could Robert De Niro like walk like a criminal in the, walk into in the and, bank. Get, and get a security guard jacket and do right. this and that? They just and, do it. Like, a lot of people aren't paying attention. Well, the, that's right. The, well, the ambulance. He steals the ambulance, and then they use it the next day. The ambulance is gone right. for how long before anybody? I think he said. Uh, well, the truck was uh, the truck. The big green truck was like two weeks, and then I think yeah, I think the ambulance was like a couple of days ago. It's like yeah, the ambulance was like two days, two three days ago, whatever. So someone's I, then, not doing it, a good job tracking things. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, but it's, people <laughs> don't. You know, though, people don't pay attention though. But like, it happens. Uh, yeah. It, it you happens, think everybody's you know? paying attention. Yeah, so so matter of factly. Not. So so that was the thing I I was thinking. I'm like, yeah, this could just be a cop that, yeah, just like looked at it. You know, uh, it's John Peterson. We ran his stuff. He's good. It, it can't be him. We don't want to arrest, you know, whatever. I don't Wasn't know. John Nick, Peterson think? one of the producers uh, for Batman? I don't know. John, no, John Peters. Peters. John Peters. John yeah. Peters. All right. Nick, Nick, did yeah. I did I throw you one? I, I kind of knew that. It was so one of many okay. plot holes in the movie. But, <laughs> give us um, another. Give wow. us another. <laughs> Wow. No, let's go. We got to go down to women. We're not done with the women. All right. I'll talk about the women then, because I think a lot of them are just to Eric's point. They're like these types from like the noir time. Like the women are just there as foils for the men. And listen, I'll I'll throw you guys a bone because I think the female actors are spectacular. I love Mm -hmm. all of them. Um, Mm -hmm. But like, you know, Amy Brenneman's role, you know, she's like. I, I hate the trope of them like just like love at first sight and suddenly he's willing to like throw away his life and everything he worked mm-hmm. for and she's willing to run away with this person who's old enough to be her father and Ooh. you know then she finds out that you know he's her reaction when she finds out that he's in a life of crime was brilliant you know she's like almost like comatose like get me out of yeah. here what are you gonna keep me as a slave what's going on yeah. and yeah. then she's willing to run away with him yeah I'm she's like, like can I can I to me, that's a have to give you my, Nick, She's like, do I love? She's like, love. Well, it was the, it, cliche. My she's friend. like, do I have to give you my answer cliche. now? Because <laughs> well, he expressed his the loneliness. That was that, that's right. what sold it. Yeah, well, he, I mean, he expressed he said, that. You know, he says I'm alone, but I'm not lonely. <laughs> but I'm so not lonely. Obviously, he is bullshit. Obviously, he is lonely. Right, Nick. I'm going to throw you another bone. So in the diner scene, when when they're when they're sitting there and they're talking, and she's like, looks at his book, and she's like, what do you do? And she's asking all these questions. He's like, hey, lady, why are you so interested in what I what I do for a living and then mm. she's like oh sorry i work at the bookstore and you know and then and then he feels bad and then he he immediately like de niro's like <laughs> he flips like this he sits next to her he starts asking her all these questions all of a sudden they're gonna go back to his house they they they, they go to yeah. bed and he does the same thing with um with nate when nate's talking oh, to him about with nate? uh with just... um with john Voight's character he he's talking to him about something and he's like, yeah, I'm not interested in history. And then he tells him how much it is. He goes, all right. Oh, yeah. 9, <laughs> 9 a.m. 9 a.m. <laughs> like, it's like De Niro, De Niro's like really, like, no, headstrong on something. And then like, it's like, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. Change. yeah. So there, yeah. there's. Right. I think with that scene, though, like at first he's like suspicious. Like, why are you talking to me? What's going on? Yeah. And then he sees, uh, oh, she's attractive. She's flirting with me. Okay. So I, like he, he, you know. I could see him wanting like a one night stand, whatever, but it's like how quickly then he falls in love with her. And it's like, I'm willing what? to spend the rest it of the wasn't, life. Though, it wasn't it, just I one wasn't. night for him either. Yeah. But, but the no, character, I don't think so either. Yeah. <laughs> but Nick, his character could be so, so sharp that he would be able to pick out if she was fake or if she was like a cop, like, hmm. you know, like, like, cause that's it. What, you know, what it's like Chrissy said, why are you interested in what I do and what I read or whatever? And then he kind of like pondered it for a second. You're right. And he's kind of, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. My name is Neil. Like, like I th- he's his guard is always rude. his guard is always up, right? It's so, if yeah. somebody wants something from him, they it must be an angle, or he's got to be suspicious about it. He's got to he's got to be on his hackles all the time, 
I just as as a uh, a matter of his profession, right? He can't let his guard down. But then when he feels safe, then he allows himself to. But he can't just walk around like that, being like, "Hey, how's it going?" Like trusting everybody. He's got to have that wall up first, and then if he feels it's safe, then it comes but down. It would have been I'm more sorry. interesting. It comes down very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, it well, would, it would have been more interesting if this was a relationship that maybe had built a little longer, so that that final scene, then when he does walk away, if it's like you know him really Nick. kind of giving it up. Well, there's only then, two hours and 50 minutes Nick, to tell the, the story. The movie would have been Nick. four have... hours then. What, you, could pl- yeah, you, you can't have your cake and eat it too, Nick. John would have had to watch it in three in three sections. Yeah, instead. I All right, so let, one. Let, let's get to let's get to some of the plot holes. I want to give I want to give Nick some time to to kind of throw some of these things at oh us that God. really kind of you know. Uh, Wait, Nick has a piece of paper. I think he's looking. I'm at looking. I'm looking. At I know Sean has stuff written down too. Sean's got Sean's uh, got a, a a legal pad. No. Like Alan Shore from Boston Legal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what what do you what, what do you an got? Odd Nick? reference. I know. It's I think right. I think Obscure, I've made good. my case throughout from beginning to end. There's been like a lot of plot holes. I think holes on Instagram and Facebook, people should maybe <laughs> chime in and see if you made your case. Yes, they should. I'll, I'll take it. So what what do you got? Listen, give me all you got. No, give me is, all you got. You know, this has been an influential movie. You know, it inspired Grand Theft Auto, like you said, inspired <laughs> Nolan's Gotham and everything like that. But just it just seemed like it was too many loopholes, too many characters. And, and I think Pacino's performance to me just really took me out of the movie from okay. the beginning. And I, I just think that ending, like I said, I don't think a police officer would have he he really hunted him down and, sh- and killed him. He didn't what? have to. <laughs> yeah, but he, yeah, but no, 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 he, he did gotten... because he was being he was being fired up. He was being fired upon. So he didn't know yeah, if he, he was going to chase him single handedly. He chased him single handedly. Yeah. Like a bunch of other cops. I mean, well, like, it's either him or me. Backup. Give me some backup. Why does it have to be one lone gunman after another? You know, because that's cinematic. So, Which yeah, because that's cinematic. the way that movie is. There you go. There you go. That's the problem that I have with this whole movie. And everybody's like, this is a classic. I'm like, when you look at it, it's like a, a, a well-made B movie, you know, with, with a lot of plot holes and, and some over the top oh. acting and some great scenes and some good performances, great casting. And I give Michael Mann credit for his intent in trying to do that and trying to blend these character moments, you know. The, the, you know, one of the honest moments I have is that that guy, you know, in the diner, you know, Dennis, uh, you know, Dennis Hayes- 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 yeah. I, first time I saw that movie, I liked his performance. Watching it again, that scene, man, when he walks out and I'm like, because he's this like low bit criminal, right? He yeah. spent mm-hmm. time in jail. And he's he's not going to make it. He's trying. Yeah, yeah. he's not going to make the money that De Niro's character makes and everything. Yeah. And he's like, he's trying his best to, to go clean. And they're treating mm-hmm. him like crap at the you yep. know at the diner and everything, and that's a decision where he has to make: do I, you know, give this up now and go for this? And, and he ends up dead, you know. Yeah, to me, that's that what was makes this film great, though. Yeah, I love it's all these small stories. These little stories. A great right? tragedy. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Sean, it's Sean, called, let me get your, a great Sean, tragedy. Sean, let me ju- let me have you jump in on this because you just freshly watched it and hadn't seen it in a while. Do you do you agree with do you agree with Nick's assessment of this? Is that it's 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 a, a long movie, but not. Not on an epic scale. What do you think? I will say, like I said in the beginning, I didn't remember a single scene. I, yeah. I do. I did remember that De Niro and Pacino had a scene together, and I don't remember what that scene was about. Though that's about the only thing I remembered. So, Were you drugged before you saw the movie? <laughs> no, I. I'm telling you, I just. It, like Nick said, it was a movie. You know, like mm-hmm. there are probably things I liked about it. And things, Came and went. I, I felt like I probably was underwhelmed, but like I said, when I, I watch it again and because it's considered that, you know, when you watch something because it's considered a classic or an mm-hmm. epic or it's influential, you're like, all right, maybe I need to give this another look. And the fact that it was long and that I got through it uh, at midnight to three o'clock in the morning, I think that says something about the film and 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 mm-hmm. and the fact that it kept me engaged. Of course, I'm I'm also watching it with the purposes of I got to talk about it, you know, in, in another day or so. But uh, you know, like, it's not perfect. It's not the perfect no. film. It it's not the worst film. Is it overrated? I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I don't feel the same way about <laughs> Nick, it. Nick is giving the thumbs up. I, I'm not feeling the same way about it as as the three of you, but, uh-huh. uh, I, like, I think I feel better about it than when I first watched it, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, and will, I, will I watch it again? I would, um, because of 
because of because of the uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for? That's not I can't find the right Hype? word because of how respected this movie is. Okay. Yeah, and I want to make sure I'm not missing something. Okay, well, maybe it's, maybe it's the Michael Mann thing because I I was high I was high hyped up on Michael Mann from Last of the Mohicans, so I was kind of like, oh, his next film. Mm-hmm. He, you know, oh, and then after that, you know, and then, and then like in, in 2005 or whatever it was, Collateral came out, mm-hmm. which I felt was like a spiritual sequel to this. It felt like it, it took place in the same LA. Same, you know, same it had the style, same, had the know. same well, feel to it. he's in love it. with LA, um, so it's, it's. Yeah, there's no, no bones about that. But no, I, pre- I appreciate the, you know, the, the, the points of view. And Nick, it's been great having you. It was a good run of podcasts you were on. So this is a good <laughs> swan is song for you. you ever t- <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, Last time you trust my judgment. If you're gonna, if you're gonna go out, you may as well go out like Pacino, firing away. I just, I don't understand what kind of ending you want, Nick. I, I, there's only this, this only ends one way, and it's, it's almost like I, I think Eric said it is, it is almost you know kind of like a Greek tragedy, and in, in, in some mm-hmm. respects, it's. Yeah. This it couldn't have ended with 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 Vincent, you know, letting him live or shooting him in the leg, and the, like he makes it clear if it's between when they're in the coffee shop, if it's between you making some poor bastard, you know, wife a widow. Now, granted, it's him, and it's, there's no one else in that scene, but they they both have their guns drawn, and they're both one is going to kill the other. They've made that very clear. Like he's not going back to prison. And Pacino mm-hmm. is not looking to get killed, so someone had to die, and and yep. and it's almost if you think about it on a spiritual level, wh- whoever whoever did the killing, like he, he kills Macaulay, he's he's killing part of himself, mm-hmm. you know that it's, mm-hmm. it, there is something to that, and you can keep shaking your head, but no one can see it. <laughs> Nick, and, I think I'm ready. I'm ready. I can see it. I'm gonna get on YouTube. Speak, but I, Sean, I, I, Sean, what do you got? Yeah. Wait, Nick, would you have liked it better, like the end of Point Break, where Keanu Reeves lets Bodie go instead of taking him in? He lets him go and do the last, you know, the, the oddly surf, enough, Keanu Reeves. Waves. Keanu Reeves was up for the Val Kilmer role originally. He yeah. was. I, I think I, what Nick I, was I looking can't, for. I can't rewrite it. I mean, as an audience member, I could just say how it well, affected me, and it I mean, just didn't, didn't work for me. I mean, that's here's just, the thing. It, there was an early draft where Pacino and De Niro drive off in a red '50s automobile, and it goes into the sky, and everyone says, "We go together," <laughs> and then they kind of drive off into it's the clouds. Not that kind of film, though. It was <laughs> that was one of the original drafts, and I said, "This sounds. This is a little too derivative. We can't kind of can't go there with that." It had, it had too much uh, of a Dom need, and Louise feel to it. Well, it, we need something. It is like we're talking about Macaulay and and Hannah, but everyone in this film is affected. Mm. They're broken. Yeah, everyone, yeah. nobody walks away. Even Edie is broken movie. at the end of this. The only one that Absolutely. lives is Kilmer, though. I mean, Kilmer is the only one that actually lives. Off yeah, but money. his marriage is on. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's over. It's done. It's, there's no, there's no winner in this movie. So, so exactly. If, if, if you're either dead, <laughs> if somebody <laughs> dies, or, or your relationship is broken. I mean, yeah, to, yeah. yeah. Tone it's, Lope it didn't even a, get you know. what he wanted. He wanted his competition rid of. Tone Lope's <laughs> still suffering. But Wait, uh, you're going to do what sorry. I got to get done. This but, what makes this a classic neo neo noir. It's it is there's, there's, there's yeah, no as a, no there's happy wreckage, ending there's here. Wreckage there's wreckage no, everywhere. Yeah, there's wreckage as everywhere. those yeah. as those B movie neo noir type things. It's not Great. a Roger Corman movie, all right? So. Either. Roger Corman is Z, Z okay, let me, let me, not B movies. Let me ask you this: Were you were you un, uh, underwhelmed by the look of the film, Nick? No, I, I like the look because I, I think that's a very Michael Mann it, feel yeah, to because it. Because when I first saw it, yeah, full disclosure, I wasn't that impressed either. But I think he overdoes. I, to me, it felt like two, three steps up above a TV production to me. Mm. Wow. Yeah. It and didn't I think, look like it, you know, consider the prestige movies that came out at this time, like the, the, the films that you mentioned, Dean, mm-hmm. Pulp Fiction was a year earlier. And even though it's low budget, but the fractured storytelling, that was something new, something exciting. Goodfellas was, you know, you had had that the fancy camera work and all that kind of stuff going on. Here is a movie that is just pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah, it brings it back to you basics. Don't, you, you don't have a lot visually going on it's just very very and it's a character study and yeah. it's just a long it's paced yeah. that's the brilliance of it is, are, is the characters there are the one or two parts of this film and there's the, when he's when they cut to macaulay driving and this a uh, 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 head-on shot of the car has a very 80s feel to it um and it's very it's michael, miami vice it's, it's michael mann like it has, has it's miami michael vice. Mann it's manhunter it's yeah. it's thief his first film yeah. with but, I, mean, I, I feel like know, macaulay 
is like an extension of the James. But that's Conn like character. Fincher has. You know, you could tell a Fincher yeah. movie. They did certain act. Right. You know, certain that's directors why, have a thing. Feel. That's why but, the look didn't bother me as much as it did in like an insider or some of his later movies. Uh-huh. It's a little yeah. over stylish. Can, can I can I start with a, a nitpick to give Nick a bone? I'm so, thinking, see, but, you guys but, are throwing a lot of bones my way. I might be right. <laughs> well, because, <laughs> because, right. Because it's, no, no, it's not a perfect film. No we're, one's we're saying doing it's your job. perfect. We're doing your job for you. But it's, it's not overrated. No, no one said it's overrated except for you. I said, the, I said. There, the when when. <laughs> When he's running like towards the end, when he he sees him and he uh, who sees who when, when, when sees Hannah who? sees when Hannah sees Macaulay and uh-huh. and they make eye contact and it's that thirty seconds before they run into the field, uh-huh. ha- so Macaulay runs and Hannah runs he runs past the ambulance and he gets to the cop and he's like give me that shotgun and the cop just hands it to him. Yeah. The cop has yeah. never met him before. <laughs> don't you know? How do you know? Don't you know who I am? That's, I'm Vincent Hanna. That's what he I'm didn't saying. say no, that. Like, it's I'm a like, ending. Maybe it's kind of like Wayne Grow. Like, maybe the, is, is there applications? Like, oh, here? did he have his badge out? But Pacino I'm, had his badge out. No, I'm sure. Well, that's Hanna great. I can get a badge too, Eric. <laughs> you can be a sure, shotgun. What I'm sure. Saying is you know you don't you don't. I'm just saying a, that maybe if a, detective, if, if a plane's closed detective walks up to you and says, "Give me your gun," you're going to give him your gun. I'm sure in LAPD, that's a, that's, Vincent that's, Hanna you know, is no. I'm sure everybody knows Vincent Hanna in LAPD. I am sure of it. I'm so, just, yeah. it's, I was just trying to help Nick right. a little bit. Let, let's let's, wind, let's wind this down. <laughs> let's wind this down. I think, I think Nick Nick has made some valid points. He no. absolutely has made some valid points. And, and like I said, it's great. It's a great way to end his podcast. Run with us, and we'll find another person that likes the films that we like. You know, at the end I of this, are we going to do uh, a <laughs> in memoriam to Nick? <laughs> Yeah, we're, we'll, we're going to make a montage of all the That's episodes right. he was on and all, all the times he was right. And then uh, we'll go with it. But no, I, you know what? We, we, we're running late, so we'll skip the whole – we usually we do favorite scenes at the end. We'll just kind of wrap it up. Just the, the enduring uh, legacy of Heat is so much so that Michael Mann just wrote – he wrote a novel, Heat 2. He wrote a sequel uh, or a prequel. It's or, a prequel. A prequel it's actually a sequel. prequel, it's, I think. Yeah. A little bit of both, I think. Um, and he and the uh, excitement was so much for the novel – that now they're looking at making this into a film, uh, Heat 2. Um, Al Pacino has said, the only person that should play Vincent Hanna as a young person is Timothy Chalamet. I read that somewhere, yeah. Yeah, mm. if you know him, he's in Dune and yeah. uh, he's yeah. a becoming actor. Oh, wow. uh, he's like, yeah, he's, he goes, it's got to be Timothy Chalamet that plays that plays this character. So uh, there's a little ringing endorsement there. So we've got, so Heat is not, you know, the, the movie's what, 20, 27 years old. I wonder um, though, will it be a film or will it be you think a series? You think something? I think like it's Netflix trying to do it as a pick film. it up. Okay. Yeah. You know, okay. I would rather see it as a film. I, I think you should just do yeah. the do do it do it. He hasn't made, believe it or not, he hasn't made a ton of films, Michael. But Mann. that's um, you know, you don't see a movie like this anymore though. Yeah. Like a three hour crime drama. It's like yeah. unless there's no, unless there's, there's there's a superhero in it. Yeah. Net, Netflix <laughs> will probably pick it. I'm you sure know? Netflix will pick this up and say, okay, we'll make it. So yeah, the nature like yeah. like you're saying, the nature of film and distribution is different nowadays. So yeah. and maybe that's what harkens this movie back to is, it, you know, this was when those those movies were in the theater and they were that's what epic yeah. and. In, maybe not in scale, but in scope, they were see, really I didn't see epic it in the films. You know, oh, I you only didn't? saw it on. No, I, oh, the wow. first time I saw it was on VHS. And, I, you know, I, I rented double, it. Double VHS. That, I think I went Christmas, it wasn't, Christmas you know, day after, like in the evening. I think I, I, double, I saw double, this. double VHS from Warner Brothers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Nineteen ninety five on sale. That's right. Um, so yeah, you know what? Like it or or don't like it, or I, I think Heat is a. Uh, I think it's one for the ages. You know, I, I think it's, it, 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 I always say it and we've talked about what we thought, you know, what we thought was a, 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 another golden age of film in the nineties. And this is one of those high watermarks. You see the, the graduating class it was with seven mm-hmm. uh, usual suspects. So you had this type of movie making that was going on that you don't see anymore. You know, and that's yeah. why the, this, the nineties were really a special time of that. Those, the, the second class or third class of directors coming into their own, like, you know, Brian Singer will kind of, Hasn't aged well, but David Fincher, uh, Michael Mann, all these auteurs really started kind of coming up in, in the wake of the Spielbergs, the De Palmas, and the you know yeah. uh, the Lucases and the Coppolas. Um, the second wave kind of came through, and you saw them really be prolific. Terry Gilliam, you know, Twelve Monkeys as well. Um, you saw them be really prolific in the '90s, and I think Heat is is a fine addition to that canon of films. So, uh, and I think we all agree that it's the final one of the final best films for both of these gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Um, regardless of the over the top acting, he would only go further with the recruit and some other stuff like that. that yeah, he, he, did, he pulled uh, it back know. a little bit for insomnia, 
but then yeah. he, he went yeah, off. Yeah, it was really great in Insomnia. Yeah. We should do it. It was really good in Sea of Love. That was, I think that that's was an before. underrated. Yeah, but that was before. Was it? Yeah. That was, was before? before? Okay. Yeah, that was like the 80s. Yeah. yeah. Or late, right. early 90s. Yeah. Yeah, it was late 80s. Yeah, I really and then didn't that they film. get married like years later, him and Ellen Barkin? Oh, Pacino and De Niro? Yeah, Pacino and De Niro got married. <laughs> no, wasn't Ellen Barkin in Sea of Love? Yeah, she yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. then they get married at some point, those two? No, he married no, Beverly uh, D'Angelo. Yeah, Beverly D'Angelo, that's who he married. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll be and honest, uh, Pacino was the best part of House of Gucci, which was a bad movie. But okay. he his, his acting- It was a bad movie. But his act, he was, <laughs> he was probably, I thought his performance was, was, was pretty good in that. Well, they were both Sean, great Sean's in the like, Irishman. Was, just, just, yeah, Sean was just totally straight faced. That was a bad movie. <laughs> yeah, Pacino was, I thought he was fantastic Sean, in the Irishman. Sean, did I even try to watch it or no? No. House of Gucci? <laughs> Gucci, Irishman, so. I thought was good. Yeah, Irishman, yeah. and that's long. another long. That's, that's long. a long one too. Yeah, really I mean, long. so Nick <laughs> hates Nick hates it. You guys, right, so I, I like Europe, long movies. You know. I just don't like bad long movies. I've never seen The Irishman. Oh. So. Can we uh, yeah. cut Nick's add that, mic? Add that to the God, <laughs> add that to the Godfather. We'll add that to the Godfather. <laughs> yeah, Dean, you've got some homework to do, man. Top yes. five films I've never seen. We, Godfather you, one, two, and three. The next time we we see each other in person. Dean, if I come to your place, you come to mine. We're watching The Godfather. There's no uh, nah. We'll watch the know, IT crowd again. Prepare, after prepare after re, after rewatching it, I always like Godfather two better. But after watching yeah. the offer, I actually have a lot more appreciation for Godfather one for the first one. Yeah. Check out Godfather the I love them, right? Peacock or Epic. Yeah, they're just they're good. Places. I have my I have my problems with Godfather three, but okay. well, a lot of people do. Did you see Coda? They're the just new different. Edit. I saw the yeah, new. Yeah, edit. I, I watched the. New the I watched edit, the new. I watched like, the new. Edit. That was beautiful. I bought film. the whole set. It's there's both versions are on the mm-hmm. of, of what the Godfather. There. Yeah, but Godfather it, three. It still so has. It still has first cousins uh, getting together. Yeah. At, uh, still has. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Well, reasons for me not to watch it. <laughs> All right, let's let's wrap it up. So that's going to do it for this episode of the Thirty Three Twenty Four podcast. Thanks for taking us uh, taking us with you on this podcast journey. We appreciate it. You can find us on social media, Thirty Three Twenty Four podcast on Instagram and Facebook as well. Don't forget, check out Sean Grady. We're going to put a link for historical drama. Uh, that's some reenactment uh, work that he does, historical from the seventeen hundreds. Uh, Nick, uh, yeah, <laughs> I knew Just you were going to go. Yeah, that go way. see. Yeah, Nick does some stuff. <laughs> Find it if you can find it. Go find oh, it. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, no, we're going to drop a link for Bar- Bartow Pell Museum. Nick is doing some work, some great work for them. He's got a show that's uh, that's that's closing its run, but there's still other great uh, works of, of theater you can entertainment you could see there as well. So we'll drop that in the show notes as well. Plus, he also does his blog City Kick, which we've put in the show notes. So we're going to give we're going to give Nick a double dose. We're going to give him two Thank links. Thank you. There you go. Just to Nothing show that there's no hard. For you. Just to show Nothing that there's no respect. hard feelings. Nick, nope. yes, Nick, Nick is Nick is a valued member of the team. Nick is not going anywhere. He's auditioning um, for a heat uh, heat two. I would take. I would yeah. take it. I would take. He's going to. He's going to be on the cut. He's going to be continuity for heat two. Um, so thank you, Sean. Thank you so much for for joining us. He was a last yes. minute addition, last but minute. I wanted to get him get him in here. Uh, Thanks because for having me. Thanks for. Um, as as always, thank you so always. much, Nick. Dressed for the occasion. Thanks for getting dressed up to roast this. My last you're, time you're dressed here, for a barbecue because you roasted the movie. <laughs> But, you know, if I could just say one last word, it's just, oh, come thank on. Thank you. And I watched it again, reinforced some of my things, but I did see better things that I didn't notice the first time. So I, it's not a you bad You neglected movie. to mention it's any not, of that in the hour, in the past hour I and said, 20 minutes. You neglected said, to mention any of that, Nick. I said some nice things, <laughs> but it's still overrated. Thank okay. you so much. As always, Nick, Nick, Nick is not going anywhere. Fear not. He's, he's going to be <laughs> returning soon. Uh, Christy Cuomo, as always, thank you as well. For, Thank you for, for helping me. us, helping us yep. on the defense. You know, we, we were members of the defense, and, and Eric in the, in the in the other chair for the defense as well. Yep, uh, as always. So, thank you everybody for checking us out. We will see you real soon, and until next time, please be kind and rewind.